아직 딱 맞는 단어를 못 찾았어요. 거칠다. 깨다. 어둡다. 이 복잡한 결말을 어떻게 설명하지? 어떻게 보여주지? 어떻게 묘사하지? 나는 내 아기 고양이를 위해 물병을 데웠어요. 고양이가 자기 형제들을 잊었을지 궁금해요. 어머니와 동생의 죄를 어떻게 잊을 수 있을지... 친구 중 하나는 요양원에서 일해요. 거기서 사람들은 어린 시절로 돌아가 엄마와 형제들에 대해 묻는데요. 어머니와 동생의 죄를 어떻게 잊을 수 있을지. 상상 속의 이별에서 치는 파도 소리에 잃어버린 단어죠. 그 바닷가에서 나는 슬픔과 상실의 껍질을 벗겨내요. 시간이 흐르고 바람에 I sit in a house with four empty rooms. Through my window, I watch the sea to count each wave. find the right words. I move against the sea because these words are not enough. The outline of my grief is a dream Where distance is temporary, and we are together again.
you're ready to go. Great. <laughs> great. Okay. Yeah. Great, Kim. It's just wonderful to have you with us, really, and uh, crossing bridges between countries and with with poetry and with feelings. And uh, I would probably go straight to the poem, if you don't mind, and straight to the poem, and even to the interior first, because these lines they really struck me. I sit in a house with four empty rooms, and through my window I watch the sea. They're just so visual and, I mean, so tender. And it's just unbelievable how you balance between two worlds, interior and exterior, as though bringing us to the confines of the room and then immediately taking out. So do you remember the moment you wrote this line? And did you have four particular rooms in mind? And are there any image behind this room? Um, yeah, so... Um... So the 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 first part of the poem that is in Korean um, came first, um, and I and I actually thought that that might be the whole poem. Like I wasn't actually I hadn't written the English part yet, um, but after I had given gotten some feedback from a couple of friends um, and a mentor, I kind of realized that it needed something else to kind of like move beyond where where it had currently where it currently was and so I remember yeah so to answer your question I yes I remember exactly I was laying on my bed um like just staring and just trying to ask myself like what like what was next um for the poem and like how could I kind of like bridge worlds basically um and and yeah I think that the this idea of like this four empty rooms um I've lived by myself like um like my whole like adult life kind of and moved like almost every year have needed to like move for some reason or the other and there's always this like process of having to like empty out all of your furniture um and just kind of walking around um and uh this the one apartment in particular that I was thinking of um was right near where we shot the footage um, and I loved that apartment and I was like sad to say goodbye to it. And I just kind of like remembered um, kind of like, yeah, with kind of like a sadness, um, like that time in my life um, and how lonely I was um, and how I kind of wished that the apartment. Um, yeah, it kind of just like, I don't know, it's just if walls, you know, if, if, if the apartment was alive, you know, it would tell a lot of sad stories, I think. So I, I think I was really thinking of that in relationship to the footage and thinking about how can I connect um, kind of my experience also with the footage that we shot. Yeah, that, 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 that's truly beautiful. It just, it just uh, And it's wonderful that it just made me think that now the film lives its own life on screen and it travels and it helps to make it this feeling eternal in a way so it lives its own life and it just this question came to my mind so how do you, do you usually feel this moment when it's time to let the film go it's ready to be shared and how do you take that your film lives individual life right now evoking you have your own memories right and your own feelings but when people watch they the film evokes some internal movies within them like their own memories they can connect to so how is about letting the film live with screen life and do you feel the moment when it's ready to go yeah yeah I mean yeah it's hard because you can always like keep working on video like it feels like the, you kind of have to call it otherwise you could just keep working on it forever um I I was watching it, um, the film back, um, and I was like, still, I was like taking notes, like, oh, I should change that, or <laughs> because it just feels like it's never done ever. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that something that I really uh, appreciate about poetry is that there's an abstraction to it. Um, and so, uh, and maybe, yeah, I'll talk about like the process of, of working with Elizabeth a little bit later, but I think that um, I kind of, in my other work, I kind of tend towards more uh, like narrative work, uh, like personal narrative of like retelling stories that is a little bit more like explicit um, and not um, kind of in, in an abstraction. And I think that's something beautiful about the abstraction is that it doesn't, at least for me, it doesn't like trigger 
like the memory of of the experience like as viscerally it has this kind of fog (laughs) around it where I feel protected where I'm not gonna um like I don't have to leave the room when I watch the film screen you know like I can kind of negotiate um the inspiration and how I got there but also what it became um and I think that that's what I really like what happened with this poem and this film is that I don't feel like um for me it triggers the past um so painfully yeah so that's truly the root of the film right so yeah it's it's beautiful it's just I mean uh I you should probably have read uh the notes that the jury made on the film and you were talking about abstraction and probably I thought you would not mind if I quote it and read it and then we go behind the scenes and okay so the jury uh, Janet Lee the poet and Lane Spain's artist Pedro Caldera the producer and filmmaker and poet Paulo Paul Tavares they felt this way with each successive viewing this film embedded itself more deeply in us it combines voice text image and sound with great sensitivity and palpable personal feeling. Grief cannot be adequately expressed in words. The filmmaker captures you. The filmmaker captures the changing faces of her loss through body language, domestic scenes, and, as time passes, more abstract animation. That's what you were sharing about. And, um, I mean, it's wonderful to go behind the scenes a little bit, and uh, if you could unveil uh, the process of of writing or creating. So when you write a poem, do images come to your mind or they come later? Do you storyboard? Do you script write? Or it goes with the flow sometimes? Yeah. I, yeah, I feel like normally I like writing first, um, but this process was actually quite the opposite. Um, so... Yeah, I had, so Elizabeth, um, the dancer and the choreographer in the piece, she actually approached me in 2017. Um, so all the dancing, every the footage that I shot with her was, is like six years old or something, you know, like we shot it in yeah. 2017. Yeah, and so um, she had approached me with an idea um, and that this choreography, this dance that she was making um, and um kind of interested in a collaboration and that and that and so and then yeah there was a, kind of what I said um just before this where I was a lot of my work has to do with like retelling personal stories um and so I was encouraging her to uh share the, her, the story behind the choreography um and eventually like as we continued working together kind of realized that maybe it was too soon, um, like it was too raw to share um, her, how she got to the choreography. And so then the footage sat for like six years um, because I didn't know what to do with it anymore. Um, and I, I knew that it was really beautiful and I knew that I wanted to use it. Um, but I, yeah, I think that I was in this place of not wanting to um, like betray her confidence or like not wanting to um like yeah like she like she had set a boundary basically and I totally respected it but then I also didn't know what to do um because the the choreography is so rooted in an emotion and so and I didn't yeah I was kind of this question of like how do I honor her intentions without um like revealing the her personal kind of um, struggle or story, you know, that inspired it. Um, and so I hope that the poem like honors her while also like protecting her and like moves from how she, um, came up with the choreography and to something, um, new, um, that also has my voice and the voice of the collaborators in it. Um, and so, and the poem was really inspired loosely by Elizabeth and her dancing, um, but also wanting to like add another element to it um, that felt universal. No, that's, that's, that's an amazing story. And it's like, it was proved with time. Like time was here, like one more protagonist 
because mm -hmm. I truly believe that the stories that have lived within you, they are truly the story that uh, they just, they're so right to be mm -hmm. shared. But this moment when it was just so beautifully felt by you and uh, and uh, yeah so but the poem um you you speak korean right don't you or so, it's an interesting story right this rhythms and shift from korean to english i mean mm -hmm. i would love to hear more uh, about it yeah yeah so i mean it was i mean this film was a it was a big collaboration um and so I, yeah, and kind of, yeah, kind of going back to, you know, Elizabeth is, is uh, Korean. Um, and so I worked with a lot of different people. So I worked with a translator and I worked with a poet um, in Korea. And then um, the animation was uh, like, I was mentored for the animation with an animator here in the U.S. And so, um, yeah, I, I think it, yeah, kind of like, yeah, without saying too much, you know, about how the choreography developed for her, I, I think it kind of like goes al along with that thought process of like wanting this to be um, both really intentional um, to her experience while also not appropriating her story or, you know, kind of making it be something um, that also was personal to me since we were kind of the two main collaborators on it. Um, and so, so yeah, I was really also because I knew that the film was going to have this kind of interior and exterior um, kind of moving between these two spaces. And so I was trying to imagine what would be the metaphor or what would be um, the way to move between spaces in language um, as well uh, in relationship to um, the choreography and what the dance was trying to speak through the body. Yeah. And uh, do you still stay in touch? And are you thinking of the next collaborations? Uh, I mean, with Elizabeth, because it's, uh, I feel she's in use, it's uh, here, and a protagonist, a key cast, a youth, a choreographer, and the wonderful clash of your personal experience and her own, and it made, made us all feel in ways so subtle, so profound, and I mean, so do you plan to, to work more with Elizabeth, or... Uh, I mean, or it just, uh, you know, it, what, what's the future of creative, fruitful collaboration? I, yeah, I mean, it would be great. So, so um, I actually, so the film was shot in Milwaukee and I actually live in Utah now. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I don't live um, in Milwaukee anymore, which is sad for me. <laughs> um, oh. I, I miss the water, <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I would love, um, we, yeah, we keep in touch. I actually text her, like, when I started, like, um, thinking about the film again, um, like, last, at the end of last year, I texted her and was like, do you remember, <laughs> like, seven <laughs> years, you know, six years ago when we shot this footage? Um, like, I actually am, like, it's turning, it's going to have another life um, now, and um, asking her if she wanted to do the voiceover recording in English, um, and wanting to be a part of it that way. So it's been really fun, um, like, kind of catching up now, because the project has, is alive again in this capacity, and so, yeah, it's been really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's truly I mean, it's it's great. It's like when you think of reprising the work, maybe, and then we just let it let it live its its life. And in different years, it will have different feelings. It's, I mean, and you said some, something beautiful about the water and living by the by the lake. You have lakes in Wisconsin, and uh, you would love to hear that. It was just unbelievable that um, we were playing. Well, our screening was happening in Lisbon, the city that lives by the sea, by by the like almost to the rhythm of the waves. Mm -hmm. And speaking of separation and belonging as a theme, we were so surprised to get so many what we as we put it water films. Because water and the sea became uh, like a protagonist and like a late motif for so many films that the artists can express themselves through water and through this water world. And I have here something to to say that you uh, in your uh, app, in your submission you to quote you, Kim, you said that in this film, uh, different water worlds 
Sea, snow, tears, bodies collide as grief is poetically explored through movement and landscape. So, um, yeah, so it's like a narrative canva, right? Yeah. And uh, I would love to, if we can say maybe more about films by the sea. Do you think of filming by the sea? And have you thought about the sea being a late motif, a protagonist, and not an exterior, but as, as a metaphor? And, and it is, as you've been saying, it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I yeah, living here in Utah, I mean, there's these huge mountains, and I'm always like, meh. Because <laughs> I just <laughs> love the wa- I love water so much, you know, that even like huge mountains can't compare to the beauty of um, the sea and of, of water to me. And so, yeah, I mean, when I was living in Milwaukee, I can't yeah tell you how many times I in the morning if something was bothering me, I would wake up really early and just decide to walk down to the to late to the lakefront and just watch um, the waves. And it was a real, it was a coping mechanism for me um, that really helped because every single day it's different. And I felt like that was such a metaphor for life um, and like the mind to me, um, you know, I would go there if I was really upset and maybe it would be really calm, but maybe I would go there and it would just be so angry and I would be like, me too. (laughs) And and then, you know, you go back the next day and it's totally different. So there's this like continuous change that happens with water that I just really relate to and think is is really beautiful. And and it really it really felt like for this film, like it needed to be by water um, just because of the emotionally like charged nature of the choreography. Um, And I. I wanted there to be this kind of um, at times a juxtaposition with the with the water, but at times to try to have the water meet the choreography so that they were both performing. Yeah, it's true. They were both performing. Indeed, indeed they were. And uh, so it is a prot- protagonist in a way mm-hmm. and that has, yeah, the sea has moods and, uh, well, I miss living by the, by the sea, actually. I, well, in Kiev, there is no sea here, obviously, but we do have the Sea of Azov and the Black Sea. But uh, that's, well, and I, I think it was just amazing to have how to outline grief screened in Lisbon so close to the sea. And I think it suits Lisbon so much. I don't know if it's appropriate to say about poetry films this way, but how to outline grief suits the city and the city suits the film in a way. So it's, uh, yeah, and it's beautiful. And there are so many, you were saying you would love to share more about the process behind the scenes, but and about, uh, you, you've sh- said about the whole story of, uh, that, the, the, about collaboration and, uh, uh, but about the editing, I know you edit your own films, and uh, and um, and it's interesting that um, like how it's I don't know, but it's, it's like the rhythm is so perfect in the film, and sometimes you accentuate details with extreme close-ups. I mean the hands, and sometimes you just let us, the viewers, stay with Elizabeth as as long as needed. To feel her and to attune to her heartbeat in a way. So, did you have any challenges with finding the right rhythm between exteriors, interiors, choreography, and the sea as the character too? Uh, I mean, how did you find this perfect balance in the editing room? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, yeah, that's really. Um... It's, it's really great to hear um, that that it reads like that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that um, a lot of the footage with Elizabeth, I mean, I, I like to shoot, you know, what is really exciting. And, and a lot of the stuff that she did was really exciting um, to me. And so I think that, and at the same time, I also, I feel like when I edit dance footage, like I can have a tendency to get really like um like cut to cutting the action just like shot after shot after shot where there actually is no you know it's just action and there's no pausing um so I think something that Elizabeth is really talented at is letting some moments unfold on their own and and I wanted as the filmmaker I wanted to like honor 
her her tempo too um so like I remember there's especially one moment where she kind of has her hands and they're like brought down and I really wanted to let that moment breathe because um in real life when I was filming it you know she took her time too um so yeah I think I think that this film is is special to me because uh, some of the films that I was making before this had a very different tempo and they were about trauma and it kind of felt like those films had to be slow um, because of the content uh, was really, really heavy and it, it kind of needed a lot of time. And for this film, I it was really... I guess I was really excited to try to think of how you can move through emotions or like move through something that's heavy, um, not only through like dance, but through the edit um, so that the edit could also be a metaphor for movement. Um, And so everything could be moving. The body on screen could be moving, but also there could be this metaphor for healing in the movement of the edit too um if that makes sense <laughs> yeah, it does it does make sense and it and it's felt and uh i think it's uh, you you can watch it uh, every time you watch it you find some different moments some different accents and some different feelings within you particularly like internal movie as i yeah. put it you know you you remember something what is meaningful to you and thank you so much for making it so subtle profound you and elizabeth just great and you said about healing this word he- healing and um and watery is healing indeed and there is one more protagonist in your film that's the cat the yeah. lovely cat and uh I was actually thinking about it, and my colleague Dan uh, said that is cat like a healing mechanism, you know, in a way like a healing metaphor, because like we have confines of ourselves, of our minds, confines of our bodies, but the cat is so gracious, so her natural grace is wonderful. She goes with the, the with with life, like embracing it all. So is she? itself is cat itself a healing mechanism so what's the story of this beautiful creature you know (laughs) yeah yeah I mean in 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 theory I mean yeah I adopted the kitten in December and I was really lonely and that's why I adopted him um oh it's him all right that's her it's him (laughs) oh yes yes, yes. yeah (laughs) Yeah. but uh yeah you know in theory but you know kittens are kind of monsters (laughs) I mean he is a handful so um but he's always I mean he's really mischievous um and I have this other cat who's 14 and she just wants to sleep all day you know like she's kind of like leave me alone forever um but the kitten um is a real character um and so yeah when I shot the footage um with him I yeah I mean I think I was thinking of you know Carolee Schneeman who's an experimental filmmaker who like um all, you know made an entire film you know about her cat and you know trying to you know, thinking about things that I love um and move me um like dance and like my kitten even though he's a monster <laughs> and <laughs> and and I think also um, thinking back to it too, um, like trying, I feel like the fi- since the film kind of um, is in between worlds a bit, and the choreography that Elizabeth had um, was very planned, um, and and none of it was improvised. Um, but a lot of the footage that I shot with the cat or inside was improvised. So I kind of liked that juxtaposition of having something that was really formal. And then having something that was informal um, and kind of the interiority of of the improvisation um, and having those two kind of juxtapose. Yeah. Yeah. No, but anyway, she's, he is very memorable. <laughs> Truly <laughs> beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I have a cat too, and uh, she's 19. She's going to turn 19. Uh, oh. She's a monster too, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> and I love to watch her, and sometimes she can truly also take me out of some sad moods in a way. And sometimes it's just enough to cast a glance, and it 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 just uh, changes something within you. 
And and this yeah, and this domestic landscape, if you don't mind, I call it like this, like a flat, a domestic landscape. It's um, it's something very, very, very emotional and meaningful, like you say, balancing between two worlds. But maybe you could say also a little bit more about domestic landscape and how to outline grief. Some, some you see already told that the themes were improvised, but um, yeah, but exactly this domestic landscape which makes it so cozy and this little details of the room and like you close the window with the with the curtains mm -hmm. and as like is it like a sh like shielding the window in a way in that that beautiful scene mm -hmm. and uh, and i remembered immediately the lines about um about care homes where people go back to childhood and think and call for their mothers and brothers sorry for not quoting it exactly yeah. so right but yeah, but this domestic landscape and the line about care homes, which is also domestic, trying to be domestic at least. So mm -hmm. yeah, how this feeling, how it feels for you, and how yeah, yeah. So so I was a dancer until my early twenties, and then I had a head injury, um, which stopped my dance career. And that's how I started making films because I was too disabled, uh, for a better word, um, to continue dancing. Um, and so I feel like the, my own like grief of not being able to dance comes through in a lot of my films and I think it's here too and I think that line about you know um, trying to forgive the past um, I think that my head injury kind of woke me up um, to a lot of different um, things that I had repressed my whole life you know things that I didn't want to remember things that were too painful to remember um, but when you're really sick, you know, you can't run away anymore from your past, or at least for me, I couldn't. And I had to do a lot of internal work um, to try to kind of come to terms with how I got so injured and how I, my past kind of informed who I am today. Um, and so I think that some of those lines about, you know, trying to forgive a brother and a mother or you know, thinking about going back to childhood um, and being stuck in childhood. Um, I mean, it, it was inspired by a friend that I had who worked in a care home. So that that's true. Um, but I think that I was thinking of it, her experience and also my experience of what that would be like and how my physical injury kind of defines me in a lot of ways. Um, and a lot of the footage that I shot, you know, after the injury was inside um, because I was too hurt to go outside and shoot, you know, have a big shoot or, you know, even work in groups because it would require you to be on set, you know, for a certain amount of time. And I just couldn't do it. I just I couldn't handle physically, you know, being there. So um, I think a lot of it, the interior space um, is very much like my, even though you, you don't really see a body in any of those footages. It's kind of more of like my performance in the in my collaborate my performative collaboration with Elizabeth. <laughs> um, even though there's no real body there, um, yeah. If I think I guess I was thinking if Elizabeth is kind of the physical manifestation of grief, then the interior is kind of the absence of a person, and that's kind of the interior experience of grief. And that makes it so powerful because it, but it's still you feel the presence because the the room it's naturally meant for a person to be in there. And I think by not having a person inside, it makes even it makes it so strong because it's meant to be someone meant to be there. And I I, I personally can feel your presence or I mean a human presence within the confines of this room. And that's why that lovely cat, uh, like um, waiting for a head scratch, maybe waiting for a human hand to, to give her a touch or a head, good head scratch was just so much longed, uh, awaited for. So uh, 
I so I can I I I I I'm grateful for you for having shared the the stories and um and have you been writing poems actually you've been writing poems before right but then you uh, you've shared the story how you turned into filmmaker but the poems have been always with you haven't they I mean yeah. Yeah, I, I originally wanted to be a writer, um, even before I was, a, before I found dance, I wanted to be a writer and a poet. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm always <laughs> feel like writers and dancers actually have a lot in common. I feel like they're the most underappreciated <laughs> of oh, the arts sometimes. <laughs> it must be changed. It must yeah. be changed. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like canva. The body is a canva in a way. It's the, where you can paint on, you can express yourself. It is. I mean, writing with your body is. Yeah, you work yeah. a lot with the and and now you're an associate professor in screen dance, right? And you're you're a choreographer yourself as yes. well. Yeah, 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 yes. I I just got this job um, last year um, teaching teaching film and video to dancers um so it, it's the dream position for me since that it really combines um what I'm passionate about um and so uh so yeah I think yeah I think the biggest challenge is that and and I was like this too when I was a performer but when you are are healthy um and performing a lot um you don't it's very hard to think about anything else like um you don't want to learn video <laughs> you don't want to because you're kind of like I'm a performer you know like I'm a dancer um and that's what I'm gonna do um but I yeah I think that I'm really passionate about um introducing how you can use video as a method for choreography um because um as I experienced and I think a lot of dancers get injured um and uh, need to leave the field due to pain or injury or trauma or something um and so yeah i i think that it's being an at least for me being an artist is more than just being a dancer or performer it's about really learning who you are um and becoming intimate um with who you are and I, it's my mission here, you know, to try to have, you know, try to bend the experience of what a performer can do or, or is, um, mostly as a way of thinking about longevity for their art career. Um, and I see how much working in film and poetry has transformed me. Um, so I know it's possible because I'm, I can be very stubborn. So if it can happen to me, I know that it's possible, um, for other people too. <laughs> no, it's, it's just beautiful how, how much poetry films open, open within us and how different it makes us all feel. So I could only be grateful because I'm a viewer and, uh, and you moved me a lot. You inspired me a lot. And I know your film inspired so many, so many people. And your words would be like salubrious water in a way for many people, like a healing, healing soil. I don't know, healing water, everything to, to hear about. And, um, and I just wish for, for, to wish you lots, lots of inspiration along the way and beautiful souls. And I mean, beautiful souls, beautiful creative friendship. And, uh, and I'm sure you will, like, this journey will be, I don't know, I don't know where it's leading all to. And neither do you, I guess. But it's anyway leading to something so meaningful and, and beautiful and helps us to understand so many, so many things. I, I've never, I mean, uh, like here, the situation here in Ukraine has transformed us a lot too, has transformed me. And interestingly, I'm, I'm speaking of body language and you use body language, choreography, right? As a main, as a main language. And I feel that sometimes we have so many beautiful words and rich vocabularies, but when it comes to real feelings, you, you feel lack of words. You can't express yourself enough. And I found myself sometimes that 
I, I can't express myself and I can only express it with a look or even with a touch. So so your poetry film is very tactile even in a way. Very, very tactile because even the way the Elizabeth touches the waves, it's just so right. So even though we're we're developing artificial intelligence right now, it goes so it's like twenty third century has already been in, but when it comes to this human touch, it's um, it's everything, and and words are truly never enough. And thank you for feeling it so strongly and sharing your beautiful work with us, really with us. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for yeah for all of your words. And I I mean I. I you say that you're inspired by me, but I, I mean, I just hold so much respect and, you know, inspiration that, um, that you are in Kyiv in, in you in Ukraine right now. And, um, yeah, I mean, I just, it's so, uh, yeah, I just really, um, bow to you and pray, you know, <laughs> I'm not religious, but I'll, I still pray. <laughs> I'll still pray. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, and yeah, and um, all of my heart is there with you. So thank you. Thank, thank you so much, truly. It, it means a lot. It, I think care, support, it's, it's truly everything. And uh, and it's wonderful to, despite all uncertainties and turbulent times, it's just so wonderful to create and to connect through poetry, through words, through touch, through body language. Thank you, Kim, for for filling for us. And we are. It's gonna be good. I, I I'm a believer. I'm a believer, and uh, and uh, and I think if it happens, it it makes us understand something more. And like with all senses wide open. I I maybe that was one of the reasons why the theme separation and belonging. Uh, come across and because I think that until you separate from something like from your belief from a dream or from a person you never know you could love so much you can hate so much and you can experience so strong emotion so I think that actually on one on one hand you are grateful to separation because it makes you makes you understand more who you are and that relates to you what you've been saying that being unable to do something, you are able to do something else with yet stronger and more tender and touching attitude. So uh, I'm so grateful you you responded to the theme with your beautiful film. And did you pay attention to the theme, or uh, because the film is 2023, it's uh, it's here and now. So I don't know, did it resonate with you? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, as soon as I saw the topic, I knew that I wanted to apply. I feel like sometimes with when you apply to things, you're kind of like, oh, I don't know, should I do this or not? But when I saw the topic, I was like, I knew that I was going to apply because it really spoke. Uh, yeah, it spoke to the film. But yeah, I mean, it really spoke to me. I feel like, um, yeah, just what you said about feeling separated from the medium, separated from dance, but also really desperately wanting to belong still um, and making this film in the effort of belonging. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I'm very moved by, by the conversation and so grateful to you and the Suresh, are you here? With us, you are. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, 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 I'm the invisible ghost that's just hosting this. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I just want to say, uh, okay, thanks for that last shot. You had this last shot, which looks out into light, um, because it doesn't feel. And then, of course, even if I listen to the thing on mute, I mean, if I didn't listen, it doesn't feel like a goodbye. It feels like a, an anticipation. Which I thought was beautifully communicated. And then, then you realize a line saying, Oh no, no, I'll go beyond the outline of my grief and do something else eventually. That was beautifully transmitted. Thank that you. literally felt like the like the visual actually made the line redundant. It was fantastic. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah, yeah. I I when I shot it, I wanted to blow out the sky. So I really adjusted the exposure settings. Um, to have that effect of it being almost like too bright or to have the sky kind of blend into the brightness of the water because I wanted this like like 
impossible future um, to be read in the image. Yeah, and it was it was it was surreal because uh, it was basically planned out technically, mm -hmm. and you're like, yes, I have no idea what the details are there, but I'm yeah. sure something's gonna happen, and then you gotta go off. I thought it was beautiful. It was, Thank you. It was very well articulated. I have to say, I really like the cats. I like the cats' whiskers. <laughs> it reminds me of the Margarita. See, every time, every time something strong happens in human literature, there's a cat. It's <laughs> Master the Margarita, the Matrix, on your case. Yeah. There's always a cat doing things in life. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Kim. This is Thank you. Um, so, uh, very quickly, on a very banal note, I hate to pronounce this, I've just figured out how to transfer money to your account. Okay. <laughs> yes. Sorry, transcontinental transfers tend to be a little irregular. So now I figure out how to do it properly. Yeah. You can no. So actually, so no you can problem. get only by next week. Oh, yes. Like, I no. didn't know about that because I was just about to ask you, Suresh, but well, everything seems sorted out. And Yeah, I was I was hoping you're going to try to finish it just before this interview. I was like, oh, so I had to go to the bank today because we had a holiday. We had a Carnation Revolution Day. We have an Independence Day in Portugal. So we got just a little delayed, but you'll get it. No, no worries. I, I'm, I'm so thankful um, that there is a, a monetary, like the, the there's some money in, the, in this award. I'm just really grateful. And um, so whenever you can do it, no, it, it's done. It'll just get to you like in three days or so, basically. Okay. Thank you. It's on the way. Brilliant. I look forward to seeing more of your work in our next edition. Thank you. I hope so too. Yes, yeah, we have the end. A goodbye is never a goodbye. It's just at the next step, and um, yeah. yeah. So until until we see you again, we're very grateful to stay in touch and to share inspirations. We're here for you, uh, and we wish you lots of inspiration and a very very special spring that can bring you closer to the sea and let the sea be be close to you, even in, even if you are far away from it. But let it be, let it live in your heart and. Um, yeah, I was I was hoping the next move, the next movie you make will involve a, a dinosaur footprint somewhere. In a <laughs> I mean, it's an imprint, right? It's clearly an imprint, and it's an outline of something that has passed away. Are okay, man. Do you have any work in progress? Are you working? Can you unveil if you are working on a film right now? Yeah, um, I am. So I'm in the middle of making a trilogy of films. Um, and the first one is done. But the second one um, is about the history of gynecology um, in the U.S. And so, and mostly like the torture and abuse of enslaved Black women. Is it a documentary or is it a movie, or like a fiction? It's 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 going to be nonfiction, um, but uh, yeah, it's kind of like similar similar actually to this film. There's kind of this. Um, like it moves from personal to kind of like theory um, to kind of um, experiences, my experience and other people's experiences. And so, um, yeah, it's, it kind of like moves between. So it all weighs between the stream of consciousness to chronicles and then back. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's my first time doing something like that because I normally, I just kind of stay personal, um, but I really wanted to make it a film about um, something really political uh, especially what's happening now with um, yeah but in the u.s the person is always political right so yeah <laughs> if you're not political here you don't have a you don't exist yeah <laughs> right exactly yeah, it, it takes a lot of research yeah then then you have a lot of research on the way yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a book, um, Medical Bondage by uh, DJ Cooper Owens that I'm using. Uh, it's a yeah, beautiful, painful. I mean, it's a it's an intense um, read, but really important read about, um, yeah, the history of gynecology in the US. But you're in the right place for this in terms of politics, right? I mean, you're in Utah. Met some Mormons lately? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. That's what I thought. Good. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, you're in the right place. You've got to come. That's right. funny that you know that. I so I was living in New York um, before I moved here, and I really I did not really know too much about like Utah, the Mormons. Like I really didn't yeah, know anything. Utah is famous for Mormons and dinosaur footprints embedded in desert. Yeah. This is perfect, actually. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, no, I think you wrote it somewhere, right? In your submission, your note at the moment, it was like, oh, you're doing outline of grief. I thought there would be desert, frankly. Then I opened the, opened the video and was like, oh, there's a lot of water. Where is she shooting this? I was <laughs> yeah. like, I was totally confused. But now, you, now you tell me where it was. Okay, this doesn't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> I will make sure all my films have water, even if I'm living in the desert now. <laughs> yes. If nothing else works, you always have CGI. Yeah. Screw <laughs> it up. Alrighty. Uh, it's beautiful, so, Kim. Thanks a lot, Kim. Great. This has been fabulous. Thank you so much. Yeah, I hope to meet you. I, if if I have ever the chance um, to be in the festival again, I'm going to come out for it because you are both amazing, and I'd love to meet you in person. So, It'll be thank fabulous. you so much. Have you around. Likewise. Likewise, Kim, we would love, would be delighted to meet you. And you're very welcome, even to Kiev when things are better and calmer. And uh, and we, will, we hope we will have wonderful poetic occasions ahead for us to meet. And uh, and they're not poetic, but I think it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. And you should, you should come to Portugal. Yeah, you should come to Portugal. I can take you to dolphin watching. You never see a dolphin, but that is the point. <laughs> it doesn't matter. That is the point, precisely. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Oh, right. Yeah. Thanks a Thank lot. You. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Take Thank care. you. Take care and lots of inspiration. Bye bye.